Okay, I'm here with Miss Sky, and this is uh, Miss. This is the end of the session. This is Miss Sky's roadmap to success. The Guardians uh, have worked with her quite a bit, and actually had another trainer that was out. Trainer used a lot of the similar stuff that I did, um, and uh, but I think the 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 big mis uh, mistake that the Guardians were making here is we're moving a little bit faster than a dog was ready for. So I went over uh, a lot of dog body language and, and indicators for her. If you have a dog that's whimpering or pacing or whining or barking or doesn't want to sit down, it's communicating, I'm uncomfortable. And so the guardian uh, mentioned to me that he kind of helped her lay down on the bed. And after that, he kind of assisted, kind of, uh, you know, manipulated her down and then gave her a nice massage afterwards. But the manipulation part is forced. He didn't do it in an egregious way. It wasn't abusive. But at the same time, the dog didn't come to that conclusion on its own. So we want Skye to be our indicator. And she's our litmus test. So if she gets up, like we were showing the video above from after the kennel, if I reach and she gets up, that's her way of saying that's too much. We don't want to wait for it because it will eventually escalate into a whimpering and a whining and a barking and nudging and pawing and all the rest of that stuff. This is a linear pattern. So we want to make sure that we're stopping as soon as we find the first indicator she's uncomfortable. So instead of being really uncomfortable, she's just a tiny bit uncomfortable and then we go back and undo that. So I want the guardians to work on this in small steps. I'd like to see them working on the kennel training exercise. There's two guardians in the house. I'd like to see them working on it, each one of them working on it for about two minutes per practice session, each one of them working on it five times a day. Now, uh, that's basically, uh, you know, talking about, what is that, uh, 20 minutes, uh, 10 minutes per guardian. But because we sprinkle, sprinkle it out throughout the day, that's actually good exercise for Miss Scott. We don't think of exercise as actually, uh, something like that as exercise, but training is a wonderful way to exercise your dog. Um, I'd like the guardians to also make sure, speaking of exercise, that we exercise the dog before we put her in here. And again, I think uh, in shorter bursts, I think the guardians were exercising, doing great exercise, but too much all at once. So I'd rather like to see like a 15 minute walk or whatever it is, give her 10 or 15 minutes to relax, then practice the kennel. And try to do it throughout the day. So obviously we're doing it maybe once an hour throughout the day and we're gonna accelerate our progress. Now, if you get to the point where you're doing it so often that she's frustrated and she's having difficulty, you might have to back up a little bit. Well, the guardian's been working on this, they wanna make some good progress. So, but again, we need to make sure we're going at her pace. Now, um, I'd also like the guardians to get a, um, I guess you could do it not necessarily just in there, uh, but uh, cow kneecaps, tracheas, no hides, we don't like using a rawhide, but no hides are cow's cheeks that are rolled up to look like a rawhide, cow's ears, pig's snouts, um, duck feet, chicken heads. Um, there's all sorts of, if you go to higher end pet stores, I love the green spot if you're in Omaha, they usually have a little buffet of all that stuff that you can grab. And is it still recording? Okay. And, uh, and because of that, the dog is able to chew those organic materials. So what I would like to do is see the guardians, when they get to the point where the dog can be, uh, Sky can be in the kennel nice and relaxed without any, kind of like she is now, but without any uh, hesitation or anxiety, then we, we start putting her in there with a bully stick, uh, or the bully stick we do earlier, like I mentioned the, uh, after the video, drill, drill a hole through it, put in the, make sure it's really low. But eventually put her in there when she's nice to relax and give her a, a cow kneecap or a trachea or an ear or a snout or whatever it is. So she's able to chew and she's practicing doing that thing in here. Now we'd also like the guardians to be practicing the stay. So for the stay, let's have each one of you guys practice three times a day for about one minute each practice session. So all in, we're about six minutes of stay. And again, you want to get to the point where you're at uh, 60 seconds worth of distractions and eventually without moving away. So you can turn your head around, look at your phone or whatever it is. And the whole, and then again, like I said, always throw in an easy one from here and there. And eventually get to the point where we can start leaving and having Sky stay, we go around the corner. And then we pull around the corner for a half second, come right back. Eventually we do that for longer, longer, longer. A lot of what the guardians have done, they've kind of, I don't want to say accidentally, but have been doing a lot of the things that I think are appropriate for her situation. Having her down here in the basement by herself uh, is practice that. We just don't want to go too much because the isolating is, can amplify separation anxiety as well. Uh, let me see. Uh, for creative forms of exercise, playing tug of war. Two to four minutes of tug of war is a great form of exercise. Dog training, teaching the dog to stay in the kennel training, that's great exercise. The guardians, I believe, already ordered a snuffle mat. And we're going to feed her her food and the snuffle mat. That word that incorporates incorporates uh, essentially exercise and mental stimulation. Um, you can also get her lick mats. And do, like I said, for the lick mat, let her have the first one when you're here without any negativity or anything she doesn't like. But eventually, put the lick mat in and go to the bathroom and come back. And the guardians might want to. It would it would be great if they can get a security camera 
mounted up here so you can kind of see is she whining at the door is she doing this so when you hear her whining you can look and see what she's doing but remember the whining is an indication we went a little bit too far uh, now uh, obviously we can't prevent it forever but we're going to do as much as we can to prevent that from happening okay so tug of war great way to burn energy teaching her to fetch when she brings you that ball she's in the ball mode so uh, try to for not forcefully take it away from her. If you have to hold the tree to her nose when she drops it, say yes, the we want to mark words. And then just kind of bounce the ball a couple, throw it up in the air a couple times. Te and I said it's teasing, but dogs, if you just give it, I'm not gonna be interested. So bounce, bounce, bounce. And then just a light toss. So it's only maybe a couple feet away. She's probably gonna run over and grab it when she does. Cats is gonna make a jump up for it, it looks like. Um, but when she comes back over, um, then you can uh, say yes when she comes to you. So you're creating a, 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 the ability to fetch. And eventually you would say fetch as you throw the ball. She goes and gets it and picks it up. And then she brings it back over to you. You say yes again, or you say yes, and then you give her a treat. And so now this is a game. If you throw the ball, I go get it and bring it back to you. And you give me a treat and you throw the ball again. Eventually we can teach her how to, how to do the, uh, um, an eye fetch or something along those lines. And so she can play fetch by herself. Um, other things, uh, forms of uh, physical exercise. Um, let me see, you can get her doggy backpack. They're about 60, 70 bucks, but you can put bags of water or sand. Now when she's walking, make, she's carrying extra weight, make sure you check with your vet on that one because she has a knee injury. We'll make sure we don't, they might not want her carrying that extra weight. Um, and then you can also Google set games. I'm gonna show you guys Cookie in the Corner when we get done with this video, but doing set games is a great way to have the dog burning energy, searching for, uh, so you can Google scent games and don't be weird about it if it talks about bringing cadavers into your house. You can do it without bringing dead animals in. But you can have actually hide something in a cupboard. She's border, part border collie and have her use her nose to find it. Again, very draining of energy. Also, um, we don't want to use any of those uh, aversive training tools. So um, we have an electric leash essentially for it because we've got a big, big property. But I would definitely like to get rid of that prong collar because I think that's amplifying some anxiety. It might be related to her dog reactivity issues. And then... Um, let me see what else. Um, uh, uh, and then Kongs and, and uh, Kongs and other games. There are games, puzzles that you can get. Um, I like the puzzles that are more ball or something they roll it around. The ones that are like sliders, I find that after a while the dog's like, and then they lick it all up. Um, also, the Guardians have been using kind of a hissing sound a little bit as a way of disagreeing. Um, the problem with dogs is any attention is validating. So if she gets in the trash and you say no, that's almost like giving her a treat. So can you see her real quick? Watch her. That's called a positive interrupter. So instead of a negative um, and chewing the dog out or getting, making it a negative, we want to make it a positive. So you can either do that or another one that you can go beep, 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 beep. Another one that you can do all the way for her to turn away is saying the word puppy three times because when breeders typically bring out the dog's puppy child when they're a little one, they say that word three times. It's important to say it three or four times as a linguist. Puppy, puppy, puppy! You see her ears went up. She's very high-pitched. There's a linguist that went around the world. She found out that if, no matter what the language is, if we want to get an animal to engage in something, you say it three or four times. If you want to get a horse to stop, what do you say? Whoa. We have one long word that we draw up. Three words or four words in a cadence excitedly is more engaging for dogs. Um, so basically, um, uh, if you guys can start practicing that, yes. And that marker word. So yes is the marker word we picked. Um, and so she came over to me. Did I ask her to come? No. But that's still a good thing that I want. So I'd like you guys to celebrate is what I like to call it. So every time she sits, say her marker word and pet her. Every time she comes to you, marker word and pet. Lays down, eye contact, drinks water, goes into her kennel. Um, licks my water bottle, whatever it is, you say the marker word to let her know that's what it is, and then you will follow it within two seconds of either a treat or a pet. And after a while, she starts to know the yes means that I did the right thing, and that's gonna make it a little bit easier for you to do training, but also if you reward her when she voluntarily comes to you, sits and lays down, she's gonna be more likely to do those things, which makes it easier. After a while, some of your dogs, one of my puppy last instructors did such a good job of this, their dog would walk up and sit in front of you, and if you don't start petting, they would reset and reset and reset because in their mind, that's the proper way to ask for attention because every time the dog did that, someone was giving attention for a long period of time. Sky. Yes. And then she gets to treat afterwards. Let's do one more. Sit. Well, this is my buddy Sky, or the back of Sky, and I'm David, and this is Sky's Roadmap to Success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it.